We have a neutron star. We're given the mass. This is, of course, 10 to the power 30. So the mass is 4 times 10 to the 30 kilograms. We know the radius, 10 kil kilometers. That's a neutron star, so they have they're very dense. What is the maximum angular velocity of rotation of this star? So that matter on the equator is still bound to the star. So when this rotates, now matter on the equator moves in a circle. So what is the maximum angular velocity that we can have for this to remain to stay there? Now, as this rotates, Okay, what, what forces act on, so for, suppose I take a, a small piece, a piece of matter on the equator. What forces act on it? We have the force of gravity, which is G times the mass times little m. This mass is little m here. GMM over R squared. This is the force of gravity that pulls it towards the center. Now that force of gravity is towards the center. There's also the, a normal force, Fn, which is up, vertically up, opposite. So minus Fn, that's the net force towards the center. This net force towards the center must equal to, since it's rotating, mv squared over r, which is m. And v is, because it's on the equator, v on the equator is omega r. So v squared is omega squared r squared over r. So this is m omega squared r. So if this is to stay bound to the star, Fn must be greater than or equal to zero. If n becomes zero, if the normal force becomes zero, it means it, it will not stay stuck to the star. It will fly away. So Fn must be greater than or equal to zero for this to stay stuck there. This means that G M M over R square minus M omega square R, which is Fn, that's Fn, must be greater than or equal to zero. So this means that M omega square R must be less than or equal to G M M over R square. M cancels. So this means that omega square must be less than or equal to G M over R cube. So the maximum value, since it's less than or equal to that, the maximum omega would be the square root of G m over R square, over R cube. This is the maximum value of omega. I thank you for watching.